My name is Kate Russell and today we are talking about digital apprenticeships. Now, developing our country's digital talent is a vital part of our economic growth and with a huge skills gap looming, it's more and more important that we understand how to make digital and technology an appealing career choice for young people. Could apprenticeships be the answer to that? Well, here to help me figure that out are three experts working very much at the heart of the apprenticeships cult culture. Um, we've got Bob Patton, who's Director of Apprenticeships at Accenture. We've got Alistair O'Brien, who's Public Services Sector Director, Lockheed Martin UK. And Margaret Sambell, who's Head of Strategy at the Tech Partnership Company. So in a moment, I will be giving them the opportunity to uh, stand on their soapbox and, uh, and inform you about what, you know, what, where their position in the market is. Let's hear from the experts. Um, first of all, Bob, um, could I ask you to um, give us a brief rundown of, of what your position is um, regards digital apprenticeships? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Bob Payton. I'm the Managing Director of Accenture's UK Delivery uh, Centre. Uh, we have got uh, what I believe to be one of the biggest and best IT, high level IT apprenticeship schemes in the country. Alongside my Accenture role, uh, I work with other firms in the Northeast. I co founded Dynamo, which is a Northeast IT network. And within Dynamo, we created the very first sector led IT apprentice hub. We've now got two hubs running one in Sunderland and one in Newcastle. And alongside uh, those roles, I'm also the chief executive of the Northeast Local Enterprise Partnership, uh, where one of our main aims is to double the amount of apprenticeships. Uh, apprenticeships are the way forward. Uh, we've seen them work within Accenture, we've seen them work within the technology industry within the Northeast, and they're a great opportunity for both young people and for business. Brilliant, Bob, an impassioned first statement. Um, Alistair, um, can I hand over to you now and, and give us your opening statements? Hello, everyone. My name is Alistair O'Brien. I uh, run a department of about uh, 200 software developers uh, up in Glasgow. The, the main issues we had was that it's like the rest of the industry. We know there's a shortage of skills in the industry, there's a shortage of young people coming into our industry. So a couple of years ago, we took the plunge and actually employed our first apprentice in a software development environment. So we deliberately set out to bring on people who we could develop, who would become software developers. Um, caused a little bit of an issue at first because um, we went to Skills Development Scotland, we uh, looked at their modern apprenticeship scheme, they provided a number of people, we picked an apprentice, and uh, we also had to get a mentor so that's quite interesting. We've actually set up a mentorship scheme as well. So for each apprentice we, we, we take in, and we've got five to date, um, we set up someone who mentors them, works with them, and takes them through a, a training session, right? Um, there is a shortage of uh, jobs for school leavers. I think apprenticeship is a great way about doing it. Uh, our people, the mentors actually love having to be a mentor. It, it brings something out in them as well, as well as offering a great opportunity for, 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 for the apprentice. If there's people out there listening, I would say embrace apprenticeships. The apprentice will love you for giving them a job. Your staff will actually really enjoy being the mentor and helping training a young person and seeing them blossom into forming a, a great career because our industry is a, is a fabulous place, I think, to join the digital technology industry. It's absolutely brilliant. It's a great environment for people and we need more people to come and join us. Perfect. Alistair, thank you so much. Uh, very clear um, uh, uh, view of your position. And now, Margaret, if you could introduce yourself and uh, frame your position in this uh, discussion. Thank you. So I'm Margaret Sambal. I'm Head of Strategy for the Tech Partnership. Uh, the Tech Partnership is the UK's growing network of employers that are collaborating to create the skills for the digital economy uh, and its boards include the CEOs of leading tech companies like Accenture, Cisco, Google, HP, IBM um, and also the CIOs of organisations from right across the economy and what they're working on together is inspiring young people about digital and getting into tech careers uh, about accelerating the flow of talent into the sector from all backgrounds, both through apprenticeship routes and graduate routes, um, and helping companies get the talent that they need to grow for the future. Um, 
it has particular responsibilities for apprenticeships, hence the interest in, in today's discussion, because through the tech partnership, employers are collaborating to define what apprenticeships mean for different occupations, and um, particularly new occupations that didn't maybe even exist a few years ago, but now are high growth. Um, and they are also working together to identify and promote high quality apprenticeship training uh, to make it a lot easier for more employers to take on apprenticeships with confidence. You know, I can. I think I've got enough um, from the beginning to summarise that. Um, you know, what we. You know, obviously there is a massive skills gap, and we know this. We know that there is a. You know, a, going to be a, 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 an increasing shortage of uh, skilled digital employees. Uh, you know, the the the. the fight for talent for businesses, particularly working in the digital arena, but actually even any business, because, you know, these days it's not just a, a digital careers aren't just in digital companies, you know, the computers and digital touches every part of our lives. And so there's this massive skills gap coming. And yes, you know, the demographic, the, the, the gender gap as well is a huge problem and, and employers realise, uh, you know, I think it was it, it, the, the statistics that I know and I think I heard glimpses of um, was in engineering, only 11% of engineering professionals in the UK are women and um, IT professionals, uh, it's around 16% and that figure's been falling year on year by about half a percent for a decade. Um, so yes, absolutely, you know, a, a vital aspect of uh, helping the, the economy, the British economy, the UK economy um, to get back on its, fully back on its feet is to make sure that we plug that skills gap and we don't end up becoming, um, you know, a, a nation where we have to outsource um, technical skills to other countries, which is definitely a risk. Um, okay, let's start then. Um, don't forget, you can put your questions to our panel. Um, and I'm going to start with a question that um, uh, Eleanor actually has sent in already, which seems a very good place to start, because I want to start with the discussion point number one, which is apprenticeships versus education. You know, where do apprenticeships fit into the education structure and the plan for education? Um, and Eleanor tweeted us a question saying, are the right digital skills, first of all, being taught in schools to support apprenticeships? Are children who are going through the education system, through the school system, are they going to enter um, you know, sort of the, the realm of apprenticeships with enough digital skills. Um, and perhaps, um, can I put that to, um, well, let's let's try putting that to you first, Margaret, and see whether or not your, your microphone is still, because um, uh, I think it cleared up at the end, so I think whatever was going on may have stopped. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of concern from employers about what is taught in schools and the need to inspire young people and give them a real perspective of technology and its fantastic potential. Uh, the school curriculum has changed uh, significantly um, and is now more focused on computing and computer science than it used to be, uh, which is a good thing. But employers still want to go much further in terms of how that is relevant to the, the jobs of tomorrow um, and how by uh, teaching in more real life environments, young people will be more inspired by the potential of technology, particularly girls, we were talking about the gender problem a moment ago, um, and that problem has its roots right back in the education system. Yeah, absolutely. And now, Bob, you're obviously working particularly, you know, in a lot in the Northeast, um, you know, which, uh, you know, there is, um, you know, a lot of uh, 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 rising, we call them neats, don't we? Uh, young people who are not in education, um, training or employment. Um, from, from your perspective, Bob, why choose? Why would you say to somebody choose an apprenticeship over formal education? Um. I think what we've got to remember is that um, the routes into the industry, uh, people either join the industry through uh, direct from school, from colleges or universities. And what we've got to do is make sure the pathways for all routes are very, very clear. Uh, there will be some people, some young people who the best route is through universities and we should support uh, those people who want to take those routes. But there's other routes available and the, and the route we're talking about today is apprenticeships. Apprenticeships are a great way to marry both formal training and also with uh, uh, work experience. 
and what we need to do is make sure we signpost the routes very, very clearly to the young people. Uh, in terms of the question that was asked, are, are we teaching uh, the right digital skills? I think, as Margaret says, you know, there was a good change to the curriculum last last year with the introduction of uh, computer coding in, into the curriculum, and that's great. But where I would like to see more of, I would like to see more business involvement in education. Businesses, uh, I, I don't have any truck with people who say, with any business people who say they can't get people with the right skills, because I think it's as important that businesses reach out to education and work with education, whether at schools, colleges, or universities, and, and really uh, provide work experience, uh, provide people who can who can teach. Uh, coding clubs, that type of thing. And I think it's really important that the industry uh, does whatever it can to help schools, colleges, and universities to make sure the, the right digital skills are being taught. Margaret, I mean, you've mentioned in, in the chat about, um, you know, apprenticeships that include degrees too. Could you, um, you know, flesh that out for me? How does that work? Yes, uh, this is really interesting because I don't think anymore it needs to be a choice of is it a, a formal uh, educational qualification or is it an apprenticeship? Now you can combine the two. And I think degree apprenticeships are a particularly good example of that, where a young person can get a job, undertake uh, a degree, an honor, a full honours degree at, at a, a university um, of their choice, uh, with an employer of their choice. Uh, they exit with a degree, they've got a job, they've had years of work experience while they do their degree and they haven't had to pay any fees. Um, so it's a fantastic way to both get a degree and get a head start on a career. Absolutely. Uh, Alistair, you know, assuming that somebody wants to do, approaches your organisation um, interested in an apprenticeship, a digital apprenticeship, can anybody, you know, I mean, I personally, I didn't get on with academia. I didn't do very well in school um, and I didn't come out of school with any any sort of formal qualifications. Are there any restrictions for people wanting to approach you about uh, digital apprenticeships or, you know, is it based on merit rather than academic record? No, it's, it's not, it's anybody can approach us, right? We, we, uh, we went through the modern apprenticeship scheme, so we were actually given a selection of apprentices, so we, we picked, we, we got them to come in and just had a very brief interview and just uh, for the first time we picked, uh, first two, twice we, we picked an individual, then we picked three from the, from the next cohort. Right? We just picked people we thought would fit into the culture, of the environment they seem to be interested in, you know, learning about digital technology and want to play a part. So there's nothing, I mean, I would absolutely recommend anybody who doesn't fancy going to university, who perhaps doesn't know if they want to go there, doesn't get on in school or whatever. There's lots of people, you know, as you said, who, who end up being needs. There's no, the, the modern apprenticeship scheme or becoming a digital apprentice is just a great thing for these people. It gives you a brilliant avenue. And then, as I said before, so this is a fantastic industry to work in. The salaries are above average, right? It, it takes about perhaps 18 months to two years to get up to speed to start contributing. And that's what we've found. Uh, in fact, within, a, within two or three months, I was approached by one of our apprentices with a, a list of improvements they could make to the system that they were helping support, which is fabulous. It's just, it's just a great, it's a great opportunity for youngsters to get involved. Now we have spoken already a little bit about the, um, you know, the gender balance issue, which you know, is, sorry to keep banging on about it, but it's a really important issue. And the interesting thing for me when I was looking into this topic for today is that um, as of March two thousand and fifteen, um, studies show that there were around fifty three percent of the four hundred and forty apprenticeships. Um, started in England, um, around 53% of them were started by women. So that kind of throws the whole uh, gender gap um, out of the window, doesn't it? Why, why do you think this is? Why do you think um, the, the inherent problems with you know, the, the gender imbalance both in education, because girls and women aren't choosing to take technology and, and, and digital topics so much as men, is balancing out a bit now, you know, the gender gap definitely exists in the workplace. Why does it not exist in apprenticeships? What's going on? I think perhaps... Well, on you go, Margaret. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, because the, the numbers you give now, Kate, for apprenticeships 
all apprenticeships, not just digital apprenticeships. And unfortunately, when you look at uh, people going into digital careers through apprenticeships, only 11% are female. So it's actually an even worse problem than we have at degree level or in the workforce as a whole for, for the tech sector. Um, so this is something that employers working together through the tech partnership are extremely keen uh, to uh, address because the sector is basically missing out on half the talent pool. So that's that's strange then, isn't it, Alistair? The you know clearly the 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 news about apprenticeships generally is getting out. Why isn't it getting out about uh, digital apprenticeships for for, for women? Well, uh, that, that's a good question. I really don't know because um, you know. I go out, I talk to schools, um, I've been to some of the local schools here in, in, in Scotland when they're, they're making their choices and they're 14 and yeah, yeah I, I guess you're right, it's mostly uh, the 14 year old boys are interested in the technology, though recently uh, we had two six years in for a week's experience uh, and they were both girls from one local school um, and we were really impressed with their abilities and it, it, it confirmed to them that they really liked the environment that we're in and they're both going on to do a uh, computing at university, which doesn't explain the apprenticeship scheme, but we need to get perhaps um, you know more 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 women in the, in the industry, and they go out and tell people how how good an industry it is. There's, there is in public sector, there's a, a lot of women in quite high quite high positions in the IT industry, running the local authority councils and things like that. Perhaps we should persuade them to, to come out more and be more open about the opportunities, and you know, and you know, get uh, Martha Lane Fox and people like that just saying more about getting uh, more women on board, more girls on board, because you know, it is fifty percent of, of the industry. The industry is getting older, getting greyer, and getting more male. We do need to attract a wider demo, demo, demographic into it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting, Bob, that, you know, we speak about uh, about role models and, and you've obviously spoken very clearly about uh, the mentorship programs and how, how much that means. Um, what are the benefits? Let's move on to the second topic of conversation. And, and I wanted to come to you first on this, uh, Bob. What, what, do you, what would you say to any businesses who are considering, um, uh, you know, going the apprenticeship route? What, what are the benefits for them? I think uh, I think there's there's a lot of benefits for business. Uh, when, when businesses are grown and there's so much growth within the digital and technology sector, we've got to look out and see where we're going to get our people from. And we've got to make sure that uh, what we need to make sure that every route we we, we maximise uh, and benefit from in terms of apprenticeships and the benefits we get from them. Uh, I can only talk about the apprentices that we've got. Uh, they are um, they are keen, they're enthusiastic, they're willing to learn. Um, it means you've got the opportunity of taking them and and training them uh, yourself uh, alongside your train provider. And what you get at the end of it is uh, somebody with the right skills, uh, with the right attitude, who wants to who wants to uh, do something really worthwhile. One of the things I just want to bring back into the conversation uh, we talked about earlier on when you were asking about degree apprenticeships and about uh, requirements you're looking for, one of the things that we have done within Accenture and this covers both our London and our Northeast Apprenticeship Programme is we set no minimum education requirement. All we're after is an interest in technology and the right attitude. An interest in technology and the right attitude goes a long way and goes a long way as far as businesses are concerned. Absolutely, that's pretty much uh, the, the the mainstay of my career in technology as well. Um, in the past, you know, people have criticised apprenticeships. You know, not not in the modern world, but you know, in, in in years gone by, apprenticeships have been seen by some critics as being a way to get cheap labour um, into your company for a few years. Um, do you think that perception has changed now, Bob? Is that you know, is the is the modern face of apprenticeships? Um, Managed to shaken off that, or do you still find that people, until they learn more about it, feel that they're going to be, you know, perhaps ripped off as cheap labour for a few years and then dumped on the sidewalk? Um, I, I want to go back to to what Margaret said before about uh, uh, degree apprenticeships. You know, 
uh, the program we run is a degree apprenticeship. It's it's a, a level four, high level apprenticeship scheme. Uh, we invest an awful lot of time, effort, and money in making sure our apprenticeships, our apprentices, have got the uh, the right skills and uh, are using those skills in in their in their job. The way, the reason why we're investing in them is because we want that end product. It's not about cheap labour. It's about getting the right people with the right attitude to do the right job. Uh, the way we look at it is uh, business benefits, the young person benefits, and jointly the industry benefits. Margaret, is that the your experience more generally across the board, or is there still an ele element of uh, society that feels that apprenticeships is a you know is a, is a bit of a bit a bit of a, a way to uh, some cheap labour for a few years? I think in our sector, I'd, I'd fully endorse what uh, Bob has said right across the sector because, and I suppose in our sector, employers need to make a significant investment in the skills of the people that they're recruiting. Um, and remember, apprentices are employed uh, by the employer um, and employers will take on people that they believe are the talent that they need for the future, that they're prepared to invest their time, and as Alistair was talking about, mentoring significant time from the existing staff of the company to help them. So I think in our sector, I don't think that that's ever really been the case. Um, and I think that uh, it, it's difficult though for young people and for parents who maybe don't know very much about uh, the tech sector or digital careers, it's quite hard for them to understand what a digital apprenticeship is like and the fact that it is a fantastic opportunity there's massive investment goes into the person and their skills and their future capability and i think trying to get that message out to schools and to parents is really the crux of this and to get the pipeline of talent that we need to support the growth that we have in the sector yeah absolutely we've got a question coming from anna um, on Twitter who said how can we develop partnerships between industry and colleges um, I don't know Alistair do you want to take that yeah we, we uh, work very closely with uh, the local colleges we've got quite a few universities and colleges around us so perhaps less of the uh, the, the apprentices but more just making sure we understand um, and they understand what we're looking for when uh, people come out of a college you know, what skills they need uh, what the latest technologies are and, and uh, things like that. Um, for apprentices, um, up in Scotland we are looking at things like uh, Digital Skills Academy, which uh, may be something that will be uh, developed as part of an apprenticeship scheme. Um, that's a sort of fast track, very intense, uh, nine months long course uh, working with industry, which is something perhaps that uh, colleges could think about, you know, the, the sort of, I think it was mentioned earlier on about uh, working with industry, you know, part-time, go back to college part-time and earning whilst you're uh, studying, which would be a good idea. Um, but overall, yeah, there's probably not enough uh, interaction between colleges and industry um, and there should be more. Margaret, more needs to be done. Yes, I totally agree with Alistair and you know, there's great examples of employers working with local uh, colleges and universities. Um, what, uh, through the tech partnership, employers are collaborating now across the whole sector to work with further education and to work with higher education to help uh, the lecturers and academics understand the needs of the sector to put on very high quality programmes that are meeting the needs for today and for the future and accrediting those programs as tech industry gold which means that other employers can see these are great programs that employers across the sector have been involved with and i think that sort of partnership is starting to reap real benefits for the the colleges and the universities and of course for the employers and young people so i think this um the point about collaborating uh, is a really important one uh, and getting deeper partnerships with schools, colleges and universities is, is essential to, to grow the pipeline the sector needs. 
Uh, Steve raises an interesting point on Twitter. Uh, he said, is there a need perhaps for an awareness campaign to promote uh, digital skills and apprenticeships? And you know, it's it's one of those these rare sort of like beasts where, you know, we've just had an election in here in the UK and you know, normally the, the, the politicians will, from different parties will argue about everything under the sun. But this is one, you know, apprenticeships, not so much digital specifically, but apprenticeships is the one thing really that I think all the parties agree on that it's really important so you know can we do what what could be the best next step for us to um you know perhaps we need to lobby government to you know put their money where their mouth is and 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 make people more aware of the opportunities particularly in digital apprenticeships is that something we could do alistair yeah, yeah we are right so that's i'm also the chairman of scotland is which is the trade body for the digital technology companies in scotland Lobbying is something we're doing all the time. We've asked questions in the Scottish Parliament about um, skill shortage uh, in Scotland and throughout the UK. We are thousands of people short every year. We've got to be shouting this from the rooftops that uh, there, there's there's uh, plenty of jobs. It just not, not just like development jobs, like I mentioned earlier on, but people mature into program managers, project managers, there's testers, there's business analysts. There's hundreds of different types of jobs for for people in the digital technology industry and i, I think go back we, we we need to tell we need to uh, be able to convince parents that this is a great industry as well because i think nowadays you know if somebody shows perhaps academic you know academic skills or parents will push them down the, the the medical or the law or the accountancy route apologies to anybody who is uh, of one of those uh, skill sets but we really need to persuade the parents to push their kids down the digital technology route and that will help us then they can talk to their pals who perhaps you know haven't got haven't been to university and get them into an apprenticeship it, it's all about as i said shouting this from the rooftops and getting people convinced it's a brilliant industry to work in you know, and it is, it's a perception thing as well. I, I, my interest in technology started with gaming, you know, and still gaming is considered to be one of those, you know, time wasting kind of activities, but actually it can lead to so much more. Bob, what do you think? What you do, do we need more, more of a PR campaign to raise the awareness? Uh, almost certainly we do. One of the things that we've got to remember is that in, in today's society, it is very, very difficult for young people to work out what careers there are and, and what careers that they, they should be considering. Um, if you, if, if this is a stretch of the imagination, but if, if you go back to when I was young, um, you could see where the jobs were. You get, you know, we we had a coal industry, we had a steel industry, we had a shipbuilding industry, and you could see where jobs were in the region I'm from. That's no longer the case. There's so many jobs that people don't know about, and what we've got to do is think about how we give young people better career advice, how we give their parents better career advice. And we've also got to look to see what it is and what avenues there are that young people will access. So it's it's not a case of, you know, uh, of, of writing things down. It's not a case of sending people around schools. We've got to look to see what is it that young people are going to engage on and how can we get this advice across through and I think it's so important that we give our young people the best career advice possible that we tell them about what jobs are available as Alistair says you know the, this sector is a sector where uh, it's very much uh, what you would class as better jobs well paid jobs and we need people to understand how they can do it, what the pathways are and, and, and what they need to do to, to jump onto those pathways and you know especially with your sort of focus on the northeast as well i guess it's really you know one of the really uh, key things that i always speak about when i speak um, to, you know about careers in areas where there are you know depressed depressed areas of the country where there aren't as many opportunities and the great uh, we're, thing about, we're, we're, we're not depressed by the way oh no but sorry <laughs> no but when you we're, sort of like, we're very 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 proud of the region i'm from yeah, apologies, apologies. I didn't mean to infer uh, that at all. But, you know, you, you pe people don't necessarily want to leave their regional areas, I guess is what I'm saying. And the great thing about a career in digital is that you can very often work remotely and you can, you know, stay where you are, but work anywhere around the world as well. 
you know, digitally. Um, so yes, huge apologies. But that does take us on rather nicely to our final point of discussion, which is how to find the right uh, apprenticeship. Um, now, at any one time, there are up to 25,000 apprenticeship vacancies available on the government website. Uh, if you want to have a look at that, go to apprenticeships.gov.uk. Um, in a variety of career careers across industries. Um, now, that is an awful lot of choice. So how do people go about, um, uh, you know, sort of finding the right apprenticeship for them? What is the, what's the best, Margaret, let's start with you on this one. What's the, what's the best starting point if anyone watching this is considering um, an apprenticeship? Well, definitely getting on the uh, government website and having a look at what vacancies are posted there is a great place to start. As you say, there's thousands. You can narrow it down by the type, by the geography or other, other factors that might, might matter to you. So I would definitely recommend that. Um, also looking at uh, companies that might interest you, uh, seeing if they've got vacancies, approaching companies um, and asking if they would consider an apprenticeship. Uh, they might if you approach them, so I'd encourage people to take the initiative very much. Um, there's, uh, we also need more employers to be offering apprenticeships, of course, and to encourage people, uh, I would uh, our latest um, employer research shows that whilst um, that double the number of employers are intending to offer tech apprenticeships in the coming year than they did in the previous year, and we are seeing significant increase year and year in the opportunities. Uh, so I would definitely encourage people to do that and to maybe try and get some work experience that's relevant and take a taster as to whether they find that this is for them. If they're not sure, you can always try to get some work experience to test it out before you embark on it. But I'd encourage anyone with half an inclination uh, to pursue it to do so. It's the ultimate transportable career. It applies in every industry, in every country in the world. Um, and Alistair, uh, same question to you, but also, you know, how, how competitive are the places? I mean, I guess, you know, what we're saying is that, the, that there's a shortage of people um, going into these. Does that mean that, you know, th 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 that it's not that competitive when you're looking for places or is there still a lot of competition? I think there's still a lot of competition, actually. Uh, admittedly, the first time that we went out to look for a, a developer apprentice, I think we had about six people in and we, we picked one and we picked an answer to Jim. We were very lucky. I think the same thing happened the, the, the second and third time we've tried it. Um, but there's plenty of opportunities, right? So I think, do, do, you know, it's like, uh, you know, Bruce, is in the, Bruce and the Spider, you know, try, try, try again. Uh, talk to your, to your local uh, job centre in Scotland. You can talk to Skills Development Scotland. I know Microsoft are very interested in uh, software apprentices. Certainly they are up here in Scotland anyway, and it's worth contacting them, contact your local IT organization, any local IT companies and see what they come up with. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be happy to point people in the right direction and I'm sure anybody who works in our industry, if they're approached by a parent or an apprentice as to what the best way they could point them in the right direction or get someone that could point them in the direction. So don't be scared coming forward and keep trying. Margaret, you know, what are the stats from your perspective on, on the competitive nature of apprenticeship places? Well, we know that in the last year there was nine applications for every tech apprenticeship place, um, but people should not be daunted by that. They should put in more than nine applications and that's a lower uh, ratio than the average for apprenticeships overall, which is a, a symptom of the fact that our sector is growing and needs a lot more people in it. Uh, I'd also encourage young people to approach their local colleges and private training providers who can help match them up with employers that are recruiting. And, and uh, Bob, you've also you've already stressed, um, you know, your 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 own um, uh, company sort of move towards there being no academic prerequisites um, to uh, applying for apprenticeships. What can people do to better prepare for uh, an application? You know, what can make them look uh, you know, perhaps if they haven't got that great academic record, what can make them look more attractive um, to fill one of those places? I, th uh, I think it's a really good question and I think one thing they need to do is they need to do some research on the company they're applying to. You know, they need to find out uh, what that company does, what what uh, that company 
uh, the types of jobs there are, the type of things they're trying to achieve, and some sort of insight into the firm they're applying for will go a very, very long way. Um, they also need to back it up by saying what their interest is in technology. Have they done something outside of uh, uh, just studying for GCSE or A-levels? Have they created their own website? You know, wh whatever it is, look to see what it is that makes them stand out. Um, that's the sort of things we're looking for. We're looking for uh, people who've got a real interest in technology, who've got an interest in the firm uh, that we work with. And, you know, back to some of the points that Al Alistair and, and Margaret have just answered there. It, there is a lot of information out there. You know, you've got to go through uh, the National Apprenticeship Service website. But also the last point that Margaret made was very, very key about reaching out to the local colleges uh, because the, the colleges do put a lot of courses on. Uh, they're very, very good these days at communicating uh, the types of courses and the type of apprenticeships that offer. So I think there's a lot of information out there. Uh, sometimes that can be a bit daunting. Uh, and one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to reach out to, as soon as the apprentice minister gets appointed, I don't know if they've been appointed yet, I'm going to reach out to them and say, what can we do to make apprenticeships easier? more simpler, more simpler for the young people who are going to apply for them and more simpler for, for, for businesses. Do schools, um, careers offices, um, you know, careers offices, I mean, my memory of careers, um, you know, careers advice at school was absolutely abysmal, but we are we were going back to the 1980s there, so um, I think it's changed a lot these days, but are schools equipped with enough information about the opportunities in apprenticeships, particularly digital apprenticeships, to be able to, you know, bridge that gap, at least partly, and pass that information on? I think that's very hard for schools these days, and I think where we've got the help is businesses have got to help. This sector is a very uh, go-ahead sector, uh, and we need to reach out. We need to reach out to schools, colleges, and universities, and we really need to see uh, what we're doing in the sector, what job vacancies are there, what opportunities are, what the different routes in, and uh, I think there's a lot we can do, and I think we should be doing a lot more. Yeah, I think I think people should um, uh, pick your local schools, go out and visit them, talk to them on their careers day, talk to their computing teachers if they have one, and just let them know what's happening. It's, it's, schools are, love it when a, a business approach them and say, look, I'm happy to come in to help to talk about uh, industry. They just, they just love that sort of thing, and they're, they're, looking for, they're looking for businesses to do that. I would encourage anybody in the digital technology industry out there to pick a couple of local schools and just go and talk to them, and tell them how great the industry is. And the uh, jo Joe Crease, actually, um, the, uh, the the president of the uh, BCS uh, Chartered Institute for IT, uh, left a message on this uh, chat um, when we posted about the, the topic we were covering today, saying, um, I'm supporting the theme of tech apprenticeships as my BCS presidential theme this year. So again, that I guess would be another good place to go um, for information. Um, okay, just to sort of round us off before we go to your final thoughts, um, I'd like you all just to tell me one opportunity that you know of in you know some, something that really really might catch the imagination of any young people watching this um, you know what what's a really exciting kind of industry or opportunity that you could potentially go into um, or field you could go into through a digital apprenticeship uh, anyone want to I've thrown this at you kind of at the last minute anyone want to take that first Alistair you're leaning forward is there anything more exciting than programming <laughs> I don't know I mean we're looking for uh, apprentices who want to get involved in programming and hey the sky's your limit I think as I think as Margaret said you know the world's your oyster when you have digital technology skills so if you want to travel uh, develop work a few years then you can anywhere in the world is Australia America all over your skills are transferable and it's, it's just a fabulous backing to have. And you don't need to stay in programming all the time. You can go into other things, as I said, business analysis, program management. It's just It just opens up a whole cornucopia of opportunities. Uh, right. just, follow, just follow up on what Alistair said there. Uh, I've worked in the industry for 35 years. It's given me a fantastic career. Uh, I left school without any qualifications. I didn't go to sixth form. I didn't go to university. Uh, by chance, I saw an advert for a computer programmer. And that seeing that advert has changed my career. Um, reach out, have a look and see what's available. It's a brilliant uh, industry to get into. There's many, many different types of roles you can do and uh, you've just got to get started and, and, and get on that first rung 
and I'm sure we'll give plenty of uh, opportunities throughout the whole breadth of different jobs are available. And I'd, I'd add to that um, that the whole breadth of jobs is increasing every day. Uh, so we've recently uh, brought out apprenticeships in cyber security. There's now hundreds of new jobs in that field as a result. Um, uh, employers have come together to create apprenticeships in digital marketing for the first time. Uh, there's, I noticed a vacancy uh, on the apprenticeship site today uh, about mobile application development in the aviation industry as, as an apprenticeship, for example. So I'd encourage people to, if you go to uh, thetechpartnership.com, you can find out more information about the whole raft of apprenticeship uh, occupations that are available uh, in, in the digital space. Uh, and there's, a, as I say, a huge range, and it's increasing every day. Absolutely. Brilliant advice there. You know, it's interesting. I remember seeing a few years ago um, a piece of advice from an investment specialist that said, uh, buy land because it's the one thing we're not making any more of. Um, and I would adapt that now to say the one thing we are making lots of is data. So maybe go into data analysis and you're never going to be short of work. That's very true. <laughs> Okay, well, let's just, you know, just closing thoughts now, we because we're coming to the end of our 45 minutes. It's been absolutely fascinating, and I could carry on talking about this um, all day. Um, but if there was one thing that you hope people watching this, either from the business perspective or, you know, young people who are thinking what to do with their lives, or indeed if there are any politicians, because I know we do get some politicians uh, doing a sneaky listen to what we're uh, talking about. If there's one thing each of you would like people to have really got from today's discussion, um, what would it be? And Margaret, I'm going to start with you on that one, if I may. Apprenticeships are a great way uh, for talented people to get into technology, whatever their backgrounds. Uh, and that includes those with great academic capability as well as those for whom academia is a big turn off. Uh, apprenticeship spans that whole um, range and employers need to offer more and get more talent in early and young people need to get aware and learn more about it and apply for these jobs. Brilliant. Um, Bob, let's come to you next. Okay, one thing. I'm going to have one thing for three different uh, types of people. If there are any politicians watching, uh, make it simple. Make it a lot more simpler than it is at the minute. If there's a, uh, for the young people who are watching, reach out, have a look at the National Apprenticeship Service website, have a look at what local colleges are offering and see what's there. And for employers, look into apprenticeships if you're not already doing them and, uh, and really consider having apprenticeship schemes. Perfect. And final word to you, Alistair. Um, I would say go out if, if you're applying it, go out and employ an apprentice. And what the, this, the, the benefits you might not realise is that uh, we had to set up mentoring. So we had the apprentice in and they had a mentor. The mentors loved the experience and it brings a whole different culture. And those benefits you just can't put your finger on, right? And for the current crop of apprentices, we had a queue of mentors. So it actually, you know, you get extra benefit on top of having some, some new people coming in and uh, people training them up. You get all this extra benefit from just a, just a lift in the organisation. It was really good fun. Perfect. Well, I think those final words really um, say it all. It's, you know, it's an amazing opportunity for both companies and individuals. And it's an amazing opportunity for um, politics and government to actually, you know, really do something to help turn around uh, the economy and make sure that we've got enough skilled digital uh, people coming into the workforce um, to plug that growing skills gap. Um, unfortunately, that all is all we've got time for today. My thanks to my wonderful guests, to Margaret, to Bob and to Alistair, and also to you, for your questions and uh, for uh, participating through the medium of the internet. You see, it's digital. It's all digital. Um, thank you very much for sharing your insights with me today, though, everybody. And uh, also, um, well, I hope you enjoyed watching Digi Leaders TV. Um, you can carry on the conversation through Twitter, the hashtag, hashtag Digi Leaders. That never shuts. That's always open. Um, so you can make a comment at any time and uh, we will respond. And I'm sure that our um, esteemed guests today will be also watching that hashtag over the next few days if you've got any comments or thoughts that you weren't able to get on during the live live show. Um, so we will be posting up lots of different uh, versions of it. So keep an eye on the YouTube channel as well. Um, for now, though, that's all from me. And uh, the only last thing for me to say is obviously to sign off in my usual way and remind you to stay connected. <laughs>